Hello and welcome to our garden. It's a beautiful sunny day. We're in what we might call mini heat wave, although today is supposedly going to be the hottest day of the year up to now. We need to harvest some of the crops because of this heat, especially the um, calibrese and the cauliflowers. Uh, there's a lettuce or two we'd like to take so we're going to do a small harvest and then we'll do the seed setting later when it cools down a little. We're going to take some lettuce first so we'll have this one and I think that one. There's a, a slug or two got in here and I have put some of those organic pellets down whether it'll work or not I don't know. There's one, very nice. And this one, I think, they are a little gem, so they won't get huge lettuce, but they taste so nice. Right, we'll take a few of these radish, which will probably be the last of this batch. Then there's another batch following on the back, and I shall set the next batch down here later today, or when it cools down. There's one or two. As you can see, one or two has started to run to seed, but the radish is okay. Still be perfectly all right. I'll just take them out. They're quite big, some of them, and there's no no marks on them. They're very nice, actually. There. Now, so, uh, just snip and get a few off the spring onions. Now on our way to getting the spring onions we'll just take half a dozen beetroot because they're beginning to swell up a little so we'll get them young and tender okay. There you are then they're nice size that will do nicely. These are called C-H-I-O-G-G-I-A Chicogia. I hope that's how you say it. They're the ones that when you cut them in half, the flesh is white and it has those red circles in the centre. Quite pretty. Oh. We'll just lift a few. This one's not quite so big, but it's easy to get to, so we'll take those. Nice plant. We'll take the tops up, and I do like to give those to the chicken. I'll pick four more out of here, four of the larger ones, and then we'll get the onions. There are there's a few beetroot there. We'll put them in the truck with the others and we'll move on to the onions now. We'll take a few of these spring onions, they're doing very well. We'll take them from this end. Oh. I have to cut them out, the ground is quite hard. There you go. I just leave it, keep as much soil on the garden as possible. Coming away nice and clean look. Yeah, as soon as we get them in some water they come away, come apart quite easily. It's just I don't want the soil up there. That's it look. They'll go up there and be washed and they'll come apart. Nice onions. These are the broad beans doing very well now and they're ready. So what we'll do, we'll go through and we'll just pick the larger ones and we'll keep doing that until we can clear the crop. But when I take the broad beans, I do like to cut them rather than pull them because if they're quite tough, you'll actually pull the plant out of the ground eventually. So it's just as easy to cut them. So you just nick them underneath lot. You see, come off quite easy. Pick the larger ones. 
you can always I'll show you if you just squeeze gently you can feel whether the beans are ready in the pod and that's the time to take them but don't leave them too long because they'll get very very hard those beans yeah plenty in there yeah, two there not quite big I'll get some picked and then I'll come back to you. <laughs> That's the broad beans. That's enough to cope with today because we've got quite a bit to harvest. So now we'll move on. I'm, I've only all. I've picked the broad beans and I'm sweating already. The uh, We need to pick some calabrese and some cauliflowers, get them out of the ground and in up to the house where we can cool them down if they stay in this hot weather they're just going to blow okay now we've taken the cover off the calibrees to show you they're quite well on they're making good plants now if i leave them in this heat they'll start turning yellow and that's the flowers coming although you still eat them when they're beginning to turn yellow but they're not quite as nice as what they are when they're fully green we will have to lift the whole of the crop but if we cut the tops off then there'll be a second growth at the bottom so we'll be able to harvest twice and then there's the calibrees they've made huge heads oh you see there's that one the one next to it as well we can't leave these any longer in this heat else you'll get all little yellow flowers coming which spoils the head so I cut the head off cross cut it and then leave it to break again and then we'll get a second crop and go right below There you are then, that's a good calibris. We go back to the stem and if you just put a cross cut on it, like that, if I can get there, that's it. Now what you'll have now is more florets come from there, but eventually this will rot. So as soon as you get those up, the better harvest them and get the next one out of it. I'll harvest these and then I'll show you what we've got. Well, I think we're going to have to put them in the wheelbarrow. There's quite a few. Right, <coughs> these are the calibrees we've harvested. We're just going to pop them round and put them under that grapevine to keep the sun off them. A good crop. The cauliflowers will now lift what we can today. As you can see, they're all starting to blow with the heat now so we'll take what we can as well I don't think there are many we've had quite a few but remember your summer cauliflowers you need to get them quite small perhaps we've left these a day or two too long but we'll take them anyway we'll just pull them out There you are, that'll make a nice collie. As you can see it's blowing a little bit but there's enough curds in there to make a nice meal. I've put the cover back on because the butterflies are about today. I've put the shade nets on top just to shade what few cauliflowers are left in there and then later today when it cools a little bit we'll take those, sort them out and then freeze them down and I've, I've left my hat inside the net <laughs> I'll get my hat, cut these off and we'll start on the next harvest just been in the house for a cup of tea and cooled down a little and we've popped out and we're starting at the top greenhouse we're going to take two cucumbers, one for us, one for the neighbour and the first pick of the tomatoes. Let's get on with it because it's a bit hot in here. 
can take that one on there. Here we are, it's a nice cucumber. It's actually straight this time. I'll just pass this to Diane and we'll take the other one. We'll take this one as well up here. Another nice cucumber. It'll do nicely that one. Just to tell you with the cucumber what I do now, I'm taking it across the top on some canes but I'm also having to water three times a day now with it being hot there's that much moisture been taken out the pots with a plant this size it needs three times a day at least and then I put another one on the floor as well to give it that nice atmosphere tomatoes as you can see are just becoming ready now these are gardener's delight they actually ripen when they're orange they don't actually go a reddy colour but they are nice and orange and we've got quite a few so we'll pick them as you can see there's some ready on that one and some ready at the top of this one as well so we'll take those and like the cucumber I have been watering these three times a day case of just turning them over and they come away quite easy look put that little knuckle there you put your thumb on and just pull against it they just come away there you go the smell that absolutely beautiful take that one that one can come off look there and these two small ones there that's it, that's the first pick of tomatoes, that's quite nice that is, looking forward to having those with a salad tonight. With these small orange sweet ones, which are gardener's delight, harvest them when they're that colour, if you leave them any longer they will split. As they ripen, the skins to seem to set and then it will, they split the skins. The other thing I've done since I last saw you, I've taken the bottom leaves off the tomatoes. It makes watering easier and it helps ripen the crop as well. <laughs> now, as the tomatoes have been stopped and the crop starts to ripen, I will remove a lot of the leaves. But at this stage, I just take the bottom ones up, mainly to the first truss and then it makes the watering easier and the moisture gets up into the plant better. Now we'll go down and we'll harvest some strawberries and raspberries. Now we've been harvesting strawberries and raspberries for days now so but I think there'll be enough for today as well. We've come down to the fruit cage and we pick a few raspberries and a few strawberries with the looks of the currants they won't be long as well so uh, we'll get on with these as you can see there's quite a few on them every day we're, we're here picking these I'll put this down it's easy every day we're picking these you sort of get the hang of pulling them off and just letting them drop in your hand. Lovely crop. I'll get Diane to put the camera down and help me pick these. It's quite a job. And we'll pick the strawberries and show you what we've got. There's the raspberries we've picked today. We're getting that about every day and a half. We do try and pick every day and we're getting some good crops off them. Strawberries, likewise, that was picked yesterday, so that's not bad. A little bit of sunshine and brought them out. Now, while we're here, I'll just show you the red currants are coming along. They won't be long now, look. Some sunshine on those, they'll soon ripen up. Nice berry to pick, red currants. The white currants are also coming along nicely. Remember the white currants, they'll actually be a salmon pink colour, but the lovely berries. The gooseberries are not far behind. These are the red ones. Again, they just need sunshine. 
Now we've finished our harvest in at last and we've brought it in underneath the grapevine where it's nice and cool. There's the raspberries. Diane says she'll open freeze those now and use them for making jam etc. A few more strawberries. Strawberries are coming that amount every day at the moment which is just nice. Some very nice broad beans. They will be podded and no doubt used in a nice dinner with some ham. The tomatoes that we picked and the contribution from the hens, there was three eggs there this morning just now, so we picked those. Two little gem lettuce, one green, one red. They'll go nicely mixed together. Two cucumbers, always nice. Some spring onions, guardsmen, absolutely beautiful there. Now there's three cauliflowers that we picked because they're beginning to go at blow, as you know what I mean. The, the heat's got to them, but Diane says she'll sort those out. Some nice radish. These are those beetroot we picked. I've actually cut the one in half that was running to seed that we wouldn't have used anyway just to show you the pattern on the inside of them and the calibrese that is done exceptionally good we've got nine heads of that on that size they're done very well but cannot be left in in this heat so they've got to come out that's it for today it's far too hot to do anything else today we'll probably be setting seeds tomorrow if it cools down a bit so we'll see you tomorrow hello and welcome back to our seed set it's a little bit cooler today but we are under the grapevine again which does keep a little bit of sun now i'm going to set some seeds today the first thing i want to show you is i've been asked how i keep my seeds so i'll show you my seed boxes now this one, basically the one I keep up at the house and there's the seeds and I tend to drop them in categories or dates I'm going to set at the beginning of the year but obviously that all goes wrong as the year progresses. My other seed box was a gift from Georgie May, my granddaughter and I think Kate had something to do with it as well and that's the one it's design of this one this is the one i tend to keep down in the shed you've probably seen it behind me in the shed when we're doing jobs in there so there's my seed boxes yes yeah, so i have one up at the house for the main storage and then normally when i'm going to set the seed i pop them in georgia may's box and bring it down here so I'll get rid of these and we'll get some seeds set. Now, first thing I'll show is, such as your spring onions and the bellis, what we're going to grow for the winter baskets. They are set in cells and they're in little groups. The onions seem to do better that way and the bellis is always done like that. The only thing is you'll get perhaps different colours with bellis but that's the way it's always done. There's only a few in here which is just enough for this I think. I'll have a look, hang on. The compost I'm using is a medium price potting compost with lots of vermiculite in it. Now when I'm setting seeds midsummer, which is quite warm and they will dry out pretty quick but you also need to be able to water them so the water goes in. I like to put a lot of vermiculite in. So these are the ones I'm going to do for the onions. Second hand trays as you can see and this clear one is a fully recyclable one so when it cracks and breaks it'll go in the recycle. All you do is pop your finger in first, make a little indentation and then it's just a case 
this nice black seed so you can manage this and then just tap a little bit into each into each cell we'll go round and then we'll go back and use all this seed that's in this this is about the third one I've done with this packet so it it needs using up now now the spring onions seem to do better when they're done like this and I will show you my new way of planting them out once once they've grown I'll show you what I do down there so we'll pop it over here lot and I've got this piece of plastic down just to stop it making too much mess well it'd be easier to clean up I think and then just just cover there you are it doesn't want a lot but just a covering smooth it off use the back of your hand it's not and then just firm the seed in there you go label and then we'll put it into the soap tray and just leave it there until it really gets wet at the top and then it can go to the table I'll just go and show you the table I've got now this is the table we're putting them on it's the same table that we raised those wildflowers on it's in the shade a little bit here and it's got this mesh fine mesh on it but this will do for when we're germinating the seeds and then once they're in what I'll do just to really keep that hot sun off is I'll just put a bit of hessian sack over it just to keep the strong sun off and then they won't dry out quite as quick and also if it rains a little bit of the water will get through now when, especially the brassicas, once they start germinating we'll change this mesh to insect mesh to keep the insects out once we've got brassicas in there. Now we'll set the sweet William. It's called Wee Willy, which you don't really want the taller varieties in the pots and troughs so the small ones are the ones we really need now we're using the same compost for all these now these are a little bit finer seed and you do get 500 seed that doesn't mean to say there's going to be a lot it probably means that not a lot are going to come up so same again we're just scattering lines look i want the whole of this pack into here And it's a good open compost so they should germinate quite readily in there. I'll just take the bits out the bottom. Because usually those that you leave in are the ones that germinate. Same again then, we'll cover it with the, a very light covering, don't need a lot. You can actually put vermiculite on top if you want. But I find the compost is better on the top. The vermiculite tends to go green if you leave it too long, especially if you're using the lights. You can press it down if you wish, like that, just, just gently, not too tight, and then into the soap tray. And while it's in the soap tray, I'll write a label. Now, we were going to set the swedes and the turnips but obviously with this hot weather the ground's far too hard for me to break down to be able to get a fine tilth to set the seed so we'll do that in the next day or two they say there's going to be thunderstorms so if we get some good rain I can get the tilth down nice and fine and be able to set them it's no good setting them in this the, they'll all drop between the cracks on the, in the garden all these that are left, the pansies, the cauliflower, the cabbages, three lots of cabbage there. Uh, some more 
lettuce to follow on. I do the lettuce about every two weeks. I put a little scattering, a dozen or so of each on the top. Likewise, the cabbages that I should be setting in the cauliflower. Not going to set a lot, maybe put about 20 seed on top of each little pot. That'll be plenty for what we want. These pansies, if you start them early, then when they're ready, we'll pop them into liners first, like this. And then once they've got the roots down in that, we'll put them into a little bit bigger pot. So when we put them out in the winter, they're really good established plants. And they will have colour on as well. Normally, if you grow them too late, you'll get nice plants, but no flowers. So if you start early, you'll get the, uh, you'll get the flowers as well. And Diane will be able to colour coordinate it. So that'll be it for this week. I shall set these this afternoon under this grapevine where it's a bit cooler and put them on that table where it's out of the sun as well. And if we do get a thunderstorm, I can always nip in the shed and finish them in there. That'll be it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Many, many thanks for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.